So this is the mountain where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam set 50 archers to sit on the top. And second spot is Masjid al-Shuhada. Tent of Prophet Muhammad was placed over here. A thousand men were not enough, so this time they gathered men all around the Arabia. And Medina people also knew that they need a better army. Who was Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib radiyallahu an? Dip this thing in the garlic sauce. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah guys today is a very exciting day because we are going to Jabal Uhud so i'll be taking my kids with me and showing them all the places of the battle of Uhud and see them the significance of this battle so in this video we will be discussing all the areas where battle took place we will also be visiting the graveyard of shuhada of Uhud so let's begin this exciting vlog سبحان الذي سخر لنا هذا وما كنا له مقرنين وإنا إلى ربنا لمنقلبون يا الله make our journey easy and we safely reach on our destination let's begin this beautiful journey today and see all the exciting places so guys we have just reached Jama Sayyid al-Shuhada first we'll go and pray our Asr prayer now the time is around 4 o'clock we'll pray and then we'll continue with this exploration Behind me is the mountain of Uhud, the mountain of Jannah, the mountain of paradise. So before we begin this vlog, Allahumma salli wa sallam ala nabiyyina habibina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at this mountain and he said the mountain of Uhud loves us and we love it. So this is a great mountain, a great place where a great battle took place. So today my kids are super excited to know about this beautiful mountain and the real story behind it. So I'm going to explain my kids the story about this mountain and same time I'll be telling it to you also. After a humiliating defeat at the Battle of Badr, the mushrikeen of Makkah were prepared for something big because at the Battle of Badr 313 Muslim warriors defeated a thousand men army. So people of Makkah knew that after they lost this battle at Badr, a thousand men were not enough. So this time they gathered men all around around the arabia and came up with 3000 men to fight with the people of medina the muslims of medina and medina people also knew that they need a better army so now they had 1000 men versus the 3000 men so this time again the army of the non muslims were three time bigger than the muslims but before in the battle of badr muslims easily won so what's the big deal but here there is a twist because in the side of makkan army there was a young boy who was a master in military warfare and his name was khalid bin walid so now let's discuss the military strategy of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so prophet muhammad had only 1000 men and he divided them into three groups muhajirin khazraj and aws 1000 men army that was fighting from the side of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam only 100 of them had shield and armor and only 50 horses were there in this battle on the day of battle when the muslim army arrived with 1000 men at that day abdullah bin abi salul said to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that his army of 300 men will not fight because this is a complete suicide and he gave a reason that they had an agreement with nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the people of his army will only defend inside the medina so they will stay within the medina and defend they are not going to go outside and fight for them so now the army of 1000 men was reduced to just 700 men who are going to fight now prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had to make a different strategy so he had to make few changes into the battle warfare so now looking at this situation prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam changed his strategy so the new strategy was 50 archers will be standing on this mountain this mountain is called called jabal ar ramah so you can see right over there where people are standing that was the location where prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to 50 archers that no matter what happens you are not going to move from this place so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if you see the muslims have won and they are celebrating still you will not get down and prophet muhammad also said that if you see the muslim army has been defeated and vultures are eating their flesh and their bones still you will not move from your place until the order comes and you come down these archer had to stop any attack which would come from behind the mountain and right in front of us you can see that is the battlefield where the two great armies fought so this is the side where the army of 3000 men were located this army was divided into three groups the center of the groups was led by 
their leader Abu Sufyan and the left side was le led by Ikrima the son of Abu Jahl and the right side of the battle was led by Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an himself so on ground now the war starts now 700 muslims were fighting with 3000 so out of the battle one person comes out and says is there anyone from muslim army who can defeat me so ali radiallahu an comes front and he kills him off and his brother comes and challenges and Hamza radiallahu anh comes and kills him off. And now the actual war starts between the two. Now both sides, the army started to attack. In the beginning, the Sahabas felt it was a bit difficult. But slowly they started to fight so well that they were killing, that one Sahaba was killing five or six men. And the people who were on the Makkan side, the non-believers, started to panic and they were starting to running off. Looking at this, Muslim armies thought that they were winning the battle and that was felt around there. One mistake happened, those 50 archers who were instructed by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to stay on the top of mountain, 41 of them got down to go and loot the bounty. So now 41 archers went down the hill and Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anh saw this opportunity as the best opportunity and he played a master stroke. He rushed with the lightning speed, killed the nine archers. And this made a very bad situation for the Muslim because the Muslim army was being sandwiched in between. So Khalid bin Walid's army took a whole turn from backwards and now Muslim army was stuck in the between fighting the both sides. Now it is Maghrib time. So we took a pause and made lots of dua with my family and went to the Maghrib prayer. And inshallah after the prayer we'll continue this exciting and extremely important story. This lightning attack killed many Sahabas, including Hamza radiallahu an, who died in this battle. Hamza radiallahu an is in this graveyard. So now let's go and talk about Hamza radiallahu an and why he was so important and why Mushrikeen of Makkah had target to kill Hamza radiallahu an and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right now we are at the graveyard of Hamza radiallahu an, where he is buried right now. Who was Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu an? A man who was known as the leader of all the martyrs. A man who was known as the lion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is the uncle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was just two years older to Prophet Muhammad and he was a very strong and feared man in the tribe of Quraysh. Hamza radiallahu anh played a very vital role in making the battle of Badr a success and Quraysh have understood that if Hamza radiallahu anh was not eliminated or killed it will be very difficult for them to win battles in future that's why when the battle of Uhud was happening the main objective of Quraysh was first to kill Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and second it was to kill Hamza radiallahu anh in this battle and this is what actually happened when Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anh won the Jabal al-Rumah that time it was a chaotic position where many Muslims lost their life and even Hamza radiallahu anh lost his life. Now let me explain you this whole moment how this situation happened. So there was a lady by the name Hind. I will later tell you who was this lady Hind. So Hind promised Wahshi his freedom only if he is able to kill Hamza radiallahu anh. <laughs> So one amazing thing you'll always see in Mecca or in Medina is that people are so helpful and they are so giving that they come and distribute water, ice cream, chocolates. As you can see, someone had just randomly come up and gave my kids ice cream. So Allah, go enjoy. Till then I'll complete the story. Okay? And then you have to repeat it to me, the whole story. Amina, you throw it in dustbin, right? See, that green dustbin, okay? Ghanim, throw in dustbin. Hamza radiallahu an was martyred by a man called Wahshi and Wahshi was from Africa. So Hind promised Wahshi his freedom only if he was able to kill Hamza radiallahu an. And because Wahshi was a great spear thrower, she had more confidence that he will be able to kill Hamza radiallahu an in this battle. And that is exactly what happened. Wahshi threw a spear and Hamza radiallahu an was martyred. But Wahshi did not stop over there. After Hamza radiallahu anh was martyred, he went on to cut his nose and ears. And he even further went to slit his chest open and take his liver because this was an agreement that Hind had made that he has to go and bring the liver of Hamza radiallahu anh. And when he took this liver back to Hind, she chewed and spat it out. 
and this is what actually happened and it was a very painful incident for the whole Muslim people. So you will be wondering who is this lady Hind and why she had so much grudge against Hamza radiallahu an. So her full name is Hind bint Udba. She is the daughter of Udba who was a big businessman and the man who was killed in the battle of Badr. Her father and brother were killed in the battle of Badr by Hamza radiallahu an. That's why she had the grudge against Hamza radiallahu an. And Hind is also the wife of Abu Sufyan. And Abu Sufyan is the leader in the battle of of Uhud against the Muslims. Assalamu alaikum ahl al-diyari min al-mu'minin wal-muslimin wa inna insha'allahu bikum lahikun. Nas'alullah lana wa lakum al-aaf. This is the Qabar Mubarak of Hamza radiallahu an, the uncle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The rumor of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spread so fast that he had died in the war. And why this rumor started to spread? Because when Khalid bin Walid's army started to attack over Jabal al-Rimah, so you can see from here, there was this was the Jamal al rimah So one of his group immediately rushed towards the camp of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and his camp was at the place where Masjid al Shuhada is there right now. So as soon as his group went to fight with Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, only nine guards were there who were protecting him, and there was a fierce fighting going on in which many people thought that they had killed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The fight was so intense that the tooth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was broken, and out of nine sahabas who were protecting Prophet Muhammad, seven of them died. So the military of non-Muslims thought that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has died in this battle. Because Musa bin Umair also had so much similarities in his face that people were confused and they thought Prophet Muhammad uh, died in this war. So meanwhile, the Muslim army who was fighting at the forefront right over there, they just retreated back towards Prophet Muhammad and started to protect him. And what they did was they took Prophet Muhammad back on the top of Uhud mountain and made a new formation. So this made it very difficult for the army of Abu Sufyan, who was the leader of the Meccan army for them to climb up and attack them again. So Abu Sufyan's army could not climb back to the mountain and that's why he decided that it is enough of the war and he wanted to leave from this battle. So before leaving the battle site, Abu Sufyan wanted to make sure that if Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam really died or not. So what Abu Sufyan did before leaving the battle, he called out to Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an and asked him, did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam died in this battle? And and the reply came from Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an that absolutely not he's fine and he's even hearing you talking to us and this devastated Abu Sufyan so Abu Sufyan had to leave this battle but his objective totally failed and the whole war was destroyed for him because the real goal was to kill Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this did not happen. When you're coming to visit Jabal Uhud, there are few important sites. So I will just tell them quickly. So we have the first site, which is Jabal al rumah so this is the mountain where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam set 50 archers to sit on the top and they cannot move but unfortunately they came down and the battle which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was winning changed into a totally losing position and second spot is Masjid al-Shuhada this is the place where the tent of Muslims was kept the tent of Prophet Muhammad was placed over here and right next to it is the graveyard. Now I just came with my kids to eat because they have become fan of al -Baik. So Ghanim, what do you want to eat? al -Baik. And what do you want to eat? Nuggets, chicken, what? Um, I want to eat pancake and nuggets. And Amina, what do you want to eat? I want nuggets and pancakes. Okay. And I want to eat whole broasted chicken because in Bahrain we don't get broasted chicken. So let's try from here and I'll tell you how it tastes. So one thing about Albiqs over here, they don't have space for dining or you can sit and eat. So all you have to do is just take the broasted, go back in the car and eat over there. So now we'll have to sit and eat in the car. It was so crowded. It took me almost mm. 20 minutes only to get my al -Baik. And that also, the rush is not that much how it is like in main Medina city. I, now, because we are near Jabal Uhud, so over here still rush is less, but it took 20 minutes. So let's try broast it after ages. Are you excited? Oh, you started eating? How is it nice?
You like it? So this is it guys. Finally I'll bake in broasted style. So guys main thing is this garlic sauce. So first I will show you how it looks from inside. So let's open this meal. Oof 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 oof. This is this is the thing which we want. This red. The red masala inside. Yalla bismillah. So now first thing. Oh. So juicy, so tender and full of spices. This is what I miss the most. Guys, you must try, you must try the broasted nugget is nothing in front of this. Just have a look at it. Oh, you, 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 you. <laughs> so guys now just i stopped to eat food and this is another guy who came with the same scam he's like i'm from saudi arabia and i don't have money and same thing refill for me my car i don't know i'm fed up with this scam they see my car number and they start to do the scam anyways i'll go back to eating the food now which is more important than anything so i'll stop logging now and i'll eat fast now Abu Sufyan had understood that even though his army was three times bigger than that of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he could not do anything. So now his goal was to make an army which was 10,000. Battle of Trench is where 10,000 men came to attack the Muslims. And this battle is so interesting and you will definitely love to hear about it. So if you like this whole video, make sure to like, subscribe my channel and share it with your friends who are going to come on Umrah or Hajj and they will like to visit all these holy sites. MashaAllah, time to pamper King Kong and King Kong is getting washed in Medina because it has conquered some tough terrains. So it needs, to, it deserves to be clean now. Clean and shiny and it walks in on the roads of Medina.